The moment you step inside, you know you aren't alone. You shut the front door behind you and hear the faint sound of someone chopping what smells like onions. Yes, dear, it's me. You head into the kitchen and find your husband concentrating on chopping onions. I was working on a pot roast for supper, dear. Welcome home. He glances up at you, expression stern. Oh, do I seem upset? How observant of my hard-working love, leaving their dedicated, pathetic house husband behind in a house that isn't even fully available to him. Darling. Darling. Dearest. Do not play dumb with me. Please. The blue room is locked. He stares you down, subtly shaking. Oh, now you remember. I come home exhausted with the shopping, fully ready to prepare my sweetheart a meal for working so hard, only to find one of the rooms locked, with no key to be found. And you not answering my texts. He throws his hands up, dramatic as ever. No, I didn't actually send texts. You know I don't have a phone. Ah! He takes a deep breath and goes back to chopping. Ah. <sighs> Honey, I greatly value honesty in a relationship. I know I'm just a house husband, but I still think I deserve the basic courtesy of knowing why my sweet angel has outright locked me out of a room in my own home. He perks an eyebrow but otherwise stays coldly neutral. A surprise for me, is it? How interesting. Do you think I'm dumb, honey bunny? He continues cutting vegetables without looking down once, opting instead to stare you down. Do you think I'm so delusional that I'm not aware of our situation as it truly stands? Sweetie, I am fully aware that I am an inmate at the nearby asylum. I do have to actually plan out my escape so we spend a healthy amount of time together, you know. Calculated plans tend to take some mental forethought. He stops chopping with a heavy sigh. Honey, I am feeling disrespected right now. I break into your home on your terms. I manage this household while you work, and bless you, I truly do appreciate you bringing home the bacon. But I will not have secrets in this marriage. He smiles, losing his anger seemingly in a flash. If I'm self-aware, why do I believe we're truly married? Oh, you sweet muffin. We might not have had a ceremony, but you didn't exactly hesitate in calling me your hubby that first break-in. Even if you were just playing along to save yourself from disembowelment, we had a spark. He looks away and exhales, seeming to ease. <sighs> Perhaps I owe you more trust. 
You did hold me that first night while the police were breaking down the door. You cared enough to protect me. You smiled each time you'd come home to me. He smiles genuinely. You're right. I'm sorry, sweetheart. You've never hurt me on purpose. But now, I'm dying to know what awaits me in that room. May I see it? Yay! You open the door for him and flick on the light switch. He lets out a delighted gasp. <gasps> Ooh, oh, it's a little party! <laughs> to thank me for being such a great husband? R really? He gomps at all the pretty decorations, eyes flooded with tears. Oh. Oh, oh, honey bunny, this party is perfect. You got all the details right, even down to the colors. He glances down, happy tears streaming down his face. Ah, oh, this is so kind of you. I can tell you put so much effort into this, even though I've been such a Brat lately. You do love me. Oh, you truly do. Let me hear you say it, sweetheart. Pretty please. Wait one moment. But I'm gonna be bratty again if you tease me like this. You show him the papers and watch his frown turn to disbelief. These are... This is from the Yan Yan Adoption Agency. You got the asylum to release me into your care through the agency? Not until... And unless I want to sign them. You try and explain yourself as he studies you. He quickly shuts you up with a sweet, impassioned kiss. Shh. Oh, my sweet little spouse. So thankful just for a madman's company during a rough point in their life. I am thankful for you, too. You are so kind to me, despite all of my briars and thorns. He holds you, swaying gently as the music and lights sweep over the room. You know, the worst part of potentially having agoraphobia is needing a safe space. I've never truly felt like anywhere was safe until I stumbled upon you and this cute little home. And then you just walked in on me fixing lunch, fully realizing I was a mad person. And just played along. Let me pretend. Even gave me a polite goodbye when the cops showed up to haul me up. <laughs> I had a really nice time too. Oh, honey. I'm sorry I got a little nutter butters earlier. I just hated the idea that you were hiding something from me. I need to learn to trust you. That's on me. You pat his chest a few times, and he emits a few happy little sounds. No, oh, thank you so much for getting my favorite foods and making these gorgeous cupcakes. <laughs> my brattiness levels are no longer dangerously high. But my neediness and clinginess gauges are reading as critical. I would love to curl up on the love seat with some cupcakes and cuddles. Beans, I feel like such a bastard now. You were doing something sweet for me, and I had to get all head demons on you. I'm sorry, honey bunny. You curl up with him on the old couch, enjoying the treats and his company. 
Mm, I feel so safe with you. And I love you. More than anyone else. Got it? You better have eyes for no one else. No work husbands. No flings. Just. Me. Your dedicated, handsome, obedient house hubby. Okay? Oh, no. Don't lecture me. Tell me I'm gorgeous. He smiles instantly. Thank you. <laughs> I love you, sweet bean. You return his affection. At this point, it's hard not to. To be... continued? <laughs>